Hi everybody, this is Fox Nomad, and today I want to help you travel smarter by reviewing the Gorilla Pod Focus, which is this thing. Road tested after one year of travel and use. A lot of you have been asking me about my vlogging setup. Uh, because I travel so much, I generally go for products which are portable and effective. So before I show you the entire kit in a few videos from now, what I want to do is before is show you individually each of the products. And today I'm going to start with the Joby Gorilla Pod because it's both the simplest and also the weakest link of the entire vlogging setup. If you travel a lot, you're not going to have a tripod, so you're going to need something like a Gorilla Pod which can wrap around tree branches and park benches and can be a portable tripod that's not very big, but it can also be very effective and versatile. So here's my full review of the Joby Gorilla Pod. This is the Focus with the ball head. The Joby Gorilla Pod Focus is one of several bendable arm tripods that Joby make. The Gorilla Pod Focus though is the one that's designed to carry the most load, which is about 5 kilograms. So if you have a heavy DSLR, microphone and a flash, then the Joby Focus is probably going to be the bendable arm tripod for you. It's not always sold with the ball head, which is an extra component that you'll need unless you have something else to attach to this tripod. The Joby Gorilla Pod Focus can cost around $150 with the ball head, so it's not cheap, but it's held up relatively well over one year of use. The Gorilla Pod Focus weighs about 500 grams and stands about 37 centimeters with the ball head attached. The Gorilla Pod Focus has obvious benefits for travel, one being that the arms can wrap around pretty much anything like a tree branch or a park bench or basically whatever you want. The arms are pretty firm and if you use the ball head properly you can get around most anything to get an upright shot on the go. I've found over the first year of use that the arms have held up really well. They're not any looser than they were when I first got them and it still has the same functional grip so it's not lost any grip over a year of use. The metal components are made out of zinc aluminum and there are rubber tips around the edges of each little ball on the arm as well as the tips of the arms themselves. That rubber hasn't held up quite as well as I would have liked it and every time I pick up the Joby Gorilla Pod it leaves a little bit of these small black rubber residue on my hand or in my backpack which is a little bit annoying and can kind of build up and dirty your backpack. I wish that Joby had designed this a little bit better or used a different type of material that wouldn't flake off so easily. And the flaking started relatively soon after I got this Gorilla Pod. So I don't think it's because of the specific use that I've been giving the Joby Gorilla Pod. I think this is just one of those things as a result of the material that they're using. So that's something to keep in mind. You'll have to brush off your backpack every now and then and wash your hands after you hold the Gorilla Pod after a while to get rid of those little black specks of rubber. Now the Gorilla Pod does a really good job of holding a lot of weight so I can easily hold my Panasonic G85 there's a review up here of that camera as well as the lighting and the microphone I use for my vlogging setup. The Gorilla Pod arms do a good job of holding whatever structure I attach them to and using the ball head I can get a level and even shot pretty much in most circumstances and if you use the ball head it has this little indentation right here which you can use to take top down shots so if you're vlogging or you're taking videos and you want to do something where you're shooting a tabletop it does a mostly good job of getting fairly well to the ground now if the camera is heavier and you're using a wide angle lens like mine you're gonna have to stretch out the arms to hold the weight of the camera if you're using a top-down shot so that the camera doesn't fall over with the tripod but when you do that if you have a wide angle lens like I've got the 12 to 60 lens on my camera it's gonna catch one of the arms in the shot so what I do is I stretch out the arms put the tripod on a table and then shoot higher up to a top down on another table that's lower or on the floor otherwise one of two things is going to happen you're either going to have one of the tripod arms in your shot or the whole tripod and camera is going to tip over now obviously that's a problem because of both the lens and the legs being short but if the legs were any longer it wouldn't fit very easily into a backpack and I have to say that the Joby Gorilla Pod does fit very well into most backpacks it easily fits into the North Face Recon which I reviewed up here as well as my Osprey 
Daylight Day Pack, also reviewed up here. So it's really space efficient. It fits into most backpacks, even if you carry a lot of gear. This is a great tripod to carry with you if your camera is on the heavier side. And the ball head has this quick release plate, which is really, really, really useful. So you can easily get the camera on and off the tripod very quickly. And that plate actually holds on very well. So the ball head mechanics are really good too. You don't have to worry about the camera flopping around or falling or it sort of testing the limits of the ball head. Now if your camera is lighter or you're using a point and shoot but you still want a tripod, you can probably go with one of the cheaper Gorilla Pods which aren't designed to hold as much weight. You don't need a Gorilla Pod that's going to be able to hold 5 kilograms if your camera and your whole setup is a lot less than that. So that's something else to keep in mind. You can probably save on a little bit of cost if you don't want to go get the sturdiest, strongest Gorilla Pod that they make, which is the Focus. So there you have it, that's the Joby Gorilla Pod Focus. I would have liked the rubber tips and the edges to have held up a little bit better. It does flake off just a tiny bit in your backpack, which can be annoying. Also, I'm not sure how well it'll hold up after another year or two, but I think it'll be good enough to still be usable. Now, the arms have held up very well. They are very sturdy, they still wrap around, they still have a lot of tension. They've not gotten loose or less effective like some cheaper models I've used have. So it's a good product, it's overall built very well. If you have a heavy DSL, or mirrorless or if you're traveling around with a vlogging kit that has a microphone and a flash or a lighting setup then you want to get the Gorilla Pod Focus because it's strong enough to hold heavier cameras. Let me know if you have any questions about the Gorilla Pod Focus in the comments below and if you like this video or found it useful please give it a thumbs up and if you really like this video please hit the subscribe button. I'll have new videos for you every week. Thanks very much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.